What's up gamers? Welcome in to another Kylobi build video. Today I have a Stamina Dragonite for PvP. This build is incredibly fun to play, it's super strong, has so much pressure, and it has a lot of style points. If you're interested in the short version of this build, then check out my 1 minute build video, where I describe the full build in under a minute. I'll leave the link to that in the description. But if you want the full build, then stay right here. Let's not waste any more time and get straight into it. Okay, here we are. We have a, a two-handed stamina Dragonite build for you. First of all, we'll check the character sheet. Um, our race is we are Nord. I like the extra resistances. It's really handy for PvP. For attributes, I have 27 into health to get us over the nice 30k, and I have 37 into stamina to get us 22 and a half thousand stamina, and then we're sitting at about 16k magicka. Um, recoveries, 1.2 for each. That's a little low, but it's, well, it would be a little low for other classes, but for Dragonite, that's more than okay, because we get recoveries back from our ultimate, and when you combine that with our potions and stuff, it's, it's more than enough. Um, unbuffed weapon damage, 3.2k. Let's get that up a little bit. So 4.2k, plus it goes higher, of course, with continuous attack and stuff. Uh, nice 8k penetration and 30% crit. And uh, our resistances. We get a nice 32k on the back bar, almost 3k crit resist, and 29, 28k bar on the front bar. Um, we are using the Atronaut Mundustone for the extra magic recovery. That's really good for our heals, and we do have some damaging skills that require magic as well, so that's really nice. And then we are a stage 3 vampire for the undeath passive. Gotta have it in PvP, it's it's so hard to play about it. Um, and then the Jewels of Misrule food, which gives us stamina, magicka, recovery, and max health. And uh, smoked bear haunt is way too expensive, so we've gone with this. And for potions, we are running the tri stat. Again, this just helps with our sustain really good to have and I do have some detect and movable ones as well uh, really good for night blades okay so let's get in to the gear the character sheet and the stats aren't that impressive but we're gonna be doing most of our damage with a proc set so I'll I'll show you what I've come up with um, we have the first set is way of fire this gives you weapon and spell damage max stamina crit chance and then when you deal damage with a weapon you deal an additional 2000 flame damage this effect can occur once every two seconds and scales off the higher of your weapon and spell damage so this is really nice paired with a one particular skill we're using one weapon skill um, i'll show you what that is in a bit and we wanted this active at all times so i wanted it on the body but because it only comes in heavy i've gone for full body pieces and then the amulet. So I have it on the chest, waist, hands, and legs. Um, of course, all heavy. And then one on the amulet. That way, no matter which bar you're on, um, it will be active at all times. Uh, and the way this is really good for us is because we are using the skill Carve. Um, this is a really cool skill. You swipe people in front of you, you deal bleed damage, and then you cause them to bleed for an additional 7,818 over 12 seconds. Uh, and then hitting the target is already bleeding, extends the duration, and you get a little bit of a jam damage shield. Uh, but the reason this is so good is because dots hit every two seconds. So you hit somebody with this, they get hit by the way of fire and the damage from the carve, and then every two seconds, the dot hits and they get hit by way of fire again. So every two seconds, they're taking extra damage, um, and that can really add on the pressure. Um, I'll give you an example after we get through the after we get through all the gear and stuff. Um, but yeah, so that's really nice. It's really good on a DK. Uh, and then paired with that, we have a back bar set, which is Rallying Cry. Uh, this gives you crit chance, max magicka, crit chance. And then while battle, spirit, while battle spirit is active, critically healing yourself or an ally causes you and up to 11 group members to gain 293 weapon and spell damage and a huge amount of crit resistance. Um, this is less effective if you've got bigger groups, so it's great solo. Um, but yeah, this just 
you know, it makes you take no damage from crits, uh, or very little damage from crits, and uh, gives you a little bit of extra damage and really improves your survivability. So uh, this only comes in light, so I have this on two rings, the back bar bow, and then just one small piece of the armor, so I've gone for the boots. So we have that on the back bar, and then we have way of fire there. And then of course that leaves us space for a monster set and because we're a DK we got to go blood spawn because this is so good on a DK. Uh, if you don't know blood spawn add stamina recovery and then when you take damage you have a 6% chance to generate ultimate and increase your physical and spell resistance by 3700. Ultimate's incredible on a, on a DK because the more ultimates you got the more sustain you got it's yeah it's so good. Um, so of course this is just helmet shoulder. And then that leaves us the front bar where I've gone for the Vadastran Perfected Maul. Uh, you don't need a perfected one, but if you do it adds a bit of extra stamina. And then what this does is while momentum is active, casting stamina abilities while in combat generates a stack of frenzied momentum for 20 seconds, increasing your weapon and spell damage by 30 up to 10 times, so a total of 300 weapon and spell damage. And then after 5 or more stacks, your next heavy attack consumes all stacks and releases a violent explosion of energy around you dealing some physical damage to all enemies. Um, so this is really good, it can be a medium attack as well, it doesn't have to be a fully charged heavy attack, uh, which is really nice, but yeah, this is just going to add up our damage, increase our burst, uh, so it's really good to have. So to summarize, yeah, we got the Vadis Rad on the front bar, we've got Rallying Cry on the back bar bow, two rings and the boots, Way of Fire on four body pieces and the necklace, and then the blood spawn. Uh, in terms of weights and traits, of course I've gone four heavy because way of fire only comes in heavy. Uh, and then I've gone two medium and one light just so we can get as many passives as, as we can. Um, and then I've gone for a sharpened, uh, sharpened two hand more. And then I've gone for defending back bar with a weapon spell damage enchant on it uh, just to boost us even further. Um, and then on the jewelry, I've gone for one infused with weapon and spell damage, and then two swift, one with damage and one with recovery. I just felt like we needed a little bit more recovery, just so it's comfortable dodge rolling and breaking free and stuff. Um, so yeah, that's there. And then uh, I've gone for reinforced on the big pieces, the helm, chest and legs, and then some divines and well fitted. You don't need any impen because you get all your impen from your Rally and Cry, um, so just some well fit and Divines, you can swap them around, whatever feels more comfortable. Um, and then some Tri-Stat, Enchant and some Health, and yeah, a bit of everything really. Um, I probably could change these, you could probably make them all Tri-Stat. Um, bit expensive, but it could probably work for you. And yeah, no Mythic item or anything, so uh, it's not too bad to set up. Um, and I've also gone for some Poisons. Uh, so I have poison damage, increase the cost of your opponent's stamina abilities and then poison damage again. Um, I just had these but they seem to work really well. Adds on a little bit of extra pressure from our dot damage because of course our way of fire is broken from uh, our dot on carve as well so um, yeah it just seems like it works. Okay, so moving on to skills. Of course, the first one I'm going with is Carve. We already talked about that, but yeah, we're going to be getting a lot of damage from this. Um, with that, we have Molten Whip, which uh, does some flame damage, and then if you strike an enemy that is a mobile or stunned, you set them off balance. And then whenever you activate a different Ardent Flame ability, you gain a stack of Seething Fury, increasing the damage of your next Molten Whip by 20%, and your weapon and spell damage by 100 for 15 seconds. Um, so we have two other Ardent Flame abilities which can proc it and the good thing about update 40 is these can be on any bar so so far the Ardent Flame abilities need to be on the bar for Molten Whip to proc the extra effect um, but starting update 40 you can put something on the back bar and then on the front bar have Molten Whip and it will still proc it which is really nice. Um, so yeah that's a huge amount of burst we have there um, so we have Burning Embers, which is a nice flame damage dot, but what's really nice with this is you heal for 112% of the damage done, um, and they are afflicted with burning, which is always good. Um, so this is just a nice heal to keep us, to keep us alive. 
um, and it will proc Seething Fury for the Molten Whip. And Flames of Oblivion, this is an incredibly good skill. Um, I use this to spam quite often. Um, deals flame damage and you get your major prophecy and savagery, uh, increasing your crit rating. And of course, starting with update 40, this is going to be effective on both bars. So you'll get major prophecy and savagery on both bars. So you could probably put this on the back bar to be honest, um, and then use it there. And it would still proc the Seething Fury for Molten Whip. Um, so yeah, like what I would do is I would probably use Flames of Oblivion first, hit somebody with Burning Embers or maybe hit two people with Burning Embers to get that heal going and the dot. Uh, and then once I've used either two of these and one of them, or one of them and two of these, then that will proc the fully hit Molten Whip and then I'll whack them with that. Um, and of course the first thing I would do in the fight is carve to get the Way of Fire going. Um, but yeah, then we have Rally. This is Major Brutality and Sorcery. I love this skill. Uh, so it increases our damage by 20%. It uh, gives us minor endurance for an extra 15% recovery. And it's a really good heal. It's a nice heal over time and it gives you a burst heal as well when the effect ends. I love Rally. It's one of my favorite skills. Um, and then the front bar ultimate, we've gone with Take Flight. We've gone for the one with more damage. 12,900 physical damage, of course that goes way higher once we get all our buffs up uh, and stuns everybody in the air and knock them back. Huge burst, um, just an incredible, incredibly fun ultimate as well. So on the back bar, we have Voltar Armor. This is our major resolve, increasing our resistances. Does a little bit of damage over time as well. And um, while it's active, the armor returns 508 flame damage to any enemy that uses direct damage attack against you. Um, so yeah, it's a tiny little bit of damage. They probably won't feel it, but you know, you just want it for the major resolve. Race against time. This gives you major expedition, lets you be really fast, um, and removes all snares and mobilizations from you. And it gives you minor force, um, giving you 10% more crit damage. And we, we do have a good crit chance on this build, so that is really nice to have. I've gone with Fragmented Shield. Um, this calls forth a terribly pitiful shield that barely helps, but you get Major Mending, increasing your healing done by 16%. That's a huge amount. So I will use this first, get a tiny shield to make sure I don't die, and then spam some heals and go straight back up to full health. Um, the nice thing about this as well is it's a Earthen Heart ability, so it procs the passive um, Mountain's Blessing for Minor Brutality. So it gives us an extra 10% weapon damage as well, so we can hit slightly harder when we use it. Um, of course, heals, resolving vigor, you know what this does, huge heal over time, must have and gives you minor resolve, so we get major and minor resolve, increasing resistances, and then co coagulating blood, this is still a super OP heal, um, heals for a huge amount and then increases by up to 50% based on missing health, and it gives you major fortitude, increasing your health recovery, which isn't that helpful because we're a vampire, um, but yeah, you just want it for the burst heal, this is what you want. And then, of course, Corrosive Armor, again, one of the greatest ultimates in the game. Uh, limits your incoming damage to 3% of your max health. And deals poison damage, which, again, they probably won't feel. But then, whilst it's active, your direct damage dealt ignores enemy physical and spell resistance. So your direct damage attacks will be doing way more. So let me show you how this works a little bit. We've got some poor mammoths over here. I'll show you how Carve works. So literally, all we have to do is hit Carve. And as you can see with the damage numbers, you get two damage numbers every single every single prop. And of course it will activate your poisons as well, 20% uh, chance. And as you can see, every single time, every single two seconds, it's doing extra damage. Um, and they got hit by burning as well. So that literally keeps up huge amount of pressure along with your poison, along with this dot along with the dots we get from that and um, yeah then you literally just stack your seething fury and do your whip and then that's literally it and the good thing about carve is because we have it on both bars we can literally just hit them with carve once and then we can change bars and it will still be procking um, I tend to hit them a couple of times just to increase the duration and then I can go and heal or do whatever I need to do um, and yeah, it would just proc at all times and just keep the pressure on. 
So last thing I need to go through are champion points. Of course, green tree is all the usual. Just make sure you get break full. And then, you know, gifted rider for mount speed and steed's blessing for out of combat movement speed. Um, blue tree, I've gone for ironclad. Go to uh, reduce your damage taken. Uh, focus mending increases your healing done. That's always really good for PvP. Deadly aim increases your damage done with single target attacks. So we've gone for for that for an extra 6% damage done. And fighting finesse because I got a bit of crit chance. I've gone for extra crit damage and crit healing done. And then in the red tree, celerity movement speed is king. Gotta have it. Celerity is so good. Survival instincts. So 25% cost reduction on your core combat skills. So roll dodge, break free. Uh, and a sprint, that's good to have. Pain's Refuge, reduce your damage taken by 2% for every two negative effects on you. PvP always has negative effects, so that's really good. And Juggernaut, while under the effects of crowd control immunity, you take 1% less damage per stage. Um, so that's really good as well, reduce incoming damage. Always good to have. So there you go, that's the build. It's super fun to play. You, as you say, you just buff up with Rally. Get all your back bar buffs going, I'll hit the shield just before we run in, light attack, hit him with the carve, hit him with the burning embers, two of those, hit them with the whip, and that's it. Say it's so simple to play, it's really fun, Dragonite's awesome, and there we go, hope you enjoyed. And there we have it, that's the build, thank you everybody so much for watching, I hope you have as much fun with this build as I do. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more Kylobi build videos and leave a comment down below if you can see any other improvements I could make to this build. Thank you so much for watching everyone, have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.